situation ahead of that state of the nation address Karanja. Uh, President William Ruto will be expected there in the afternoon. But what is the situation uh, within parliament, especially outside parliament, um, amid reports on social media of possible protests today? Well, Michelle, we are coming to you from Parliament buildings, and uh, this is where the action will be happening later today in the afternoon when President William Ruto comes in to make his State of the Nation address and uh, inform the country where we are in as many fronts as he possibly can. Speak about the economy, uh, speak about national security, speak about uh, the rule of law. Uh, speak about every other critical matter uh, that uh, is as critical in the country. And uh, later at around 2.30, we expect President William Ruto here, members of parliament, will have taken their positions. I speak about members of the Senate and the National Assembly will have taken their position in the National Assembly from where the president will be addressing. Now, let us just go back in time. And at a time like this last year, when President William Ruto was making his State of the Nation address, there was one major thing that Kenyans were speaking about, and at that time, it was about the cost of living. Remember, we were fresh from the Azimio-led protests of last year, and we had just seen the finance bill 2023 for the very first time that introduced the housing levy and uh, introduced several other levies at that particular time. And we had lots of heat uh, coming from the people, discussions about how expensive life had become in the country. And you remember that uh, very uh, uh, that clarion call by President William Bruto when he made this address last year that... Let us tighten our belts just a little bit and uh, everything will be uh, as smooth moving forward. And at that time, he was saying this because of the reactions that the finance bill of 2023 was having, the housing levy and every other uh, discussion around it. Uh, he even stated that it was just a, a price we had to pay at that particular time. So if, if, even as we prepare uh, for a better country in future. And I believe today, President William Ruto is going to speak about where the country is. We have already seen in the past couple of days indications from government that the country is doing better. Remember, there was that circular from the cabinet last week about the country being at a better position, inflation being at an all-time high, uh, or, or rather at an all-time low. And these are some of the things that the president is going to hype up today uh, just to assure the country that everything is going as planned, as he told the country last year. But there is one major thing that happened that may place him at a difficult situation to explain everything. And this is a rejection of the finance bill 2024. Whereas in 2023, he was able to convince the country to bear and pay the price uh, to prepare for a better future and tighten the belt, it appears that the belt became way too tight for Kenyans in the finance bill of 2024 to even push them to the streets and forcing him to even after this become, uh, this National Assembly rather uh, passed the finance bill and it was only left for the president to put pen, pen, to, put pen to paper and make it low, he said I will not sign it and he sent it back to parliament and eventually that finance bill of 2024 died after that we've seen lots of things uh that have gone wrong uh remember uh, it is up, and, up at, until until yesterday when we had uh sort of a solution to the stalemate between county governments and the national government in terms of allocation to counties we have had several other things being postponed that were intended to be undertaken in the financial year 2024 2025 and these are the things that the president will now have to explain to the country even at the back of a rejected finance bill, uh, even as more people are speaking about new tax measures or new, a new tax bill coming uh, into parliament, which we shall be breaking down later when we speak to various members of parliament to understand. But one major thing also that the president is coming to parliament and perhaps, let me say, may have caught him by surprise and he may be forced to speak about is a privatization issue of various uh, government uh, assets. I speak about the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. There has been that conversation about uh, handing it over to the Adani uh, group of companies just to, en to ensure that it is better managed according to what government is saying. But it is this morning, Michelle, that we got information that in the U.S., uh, the same Adani has been indicted. And this uh, is one thing we'd want to see, where it places the president as he comes to address the country. He will be coming to address the country, perhaps trying to convince us about why we should allow such deals, with this uh, public-private partnership deals work. Yet at the same time, he'll be coming to address the country hours after the U.S., a U.S. court indicted one of the people 
who uh, have not only taken the airport but are also uh, intended uh, to take several other uh, government assets and run it in, in private uh, public partnership. They say that it is because government does not have money, these private investors have the money required so they can put in the development that is required. For instance, uh, in the JKIA, you've seen the discussions that are ongoing about putting up uh, a whole uh, entire uh, runway which people want to have, yet in the deals, uh, these things are not there. So the president will really have to convince the country about this. Another thorn in the flesh of the country, which President William Ruto uh, I, I expect we'll not avoid speaking about is the rule of law and especially matters human rights. It is only yesterday or uh, yesterday when news broke out about the uh, arrests uh, here in the country of Ugandan opposition leader Kiza Besije and this happened on Saturday. We have seen several other people uh, being taken from this country and these are foreigners as well as Kenyans who have com uh, continued to express fears about living in their own country. Questions have been about uh, the number of people who have been abducted. Remember uh, arbitrary arrests, people abducted or people arrested uh, disappear from the public, not taken to court anywhere but eventually released and nothing happens. Remember the Kitengela uh, 3 that happened just a few months ago. So President William Ruto has a lot to address the country and even to mention as well this comes at a time when his government is facing criticism from the clergy. It started with the Catholic uh, bishops and went on to the other denominations who are, are speaking about how the country is governed. In fact, the Catholic Church said that we were uh, we were in, in, a, in a series of lying uh, or, or, or dishonesty by the, 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 the William Ruto administration. So quite a very uh, unpopular uh, background that President William Ruto is coming to Parliament with. However, on a positive, whereas he may have lost uh, or he may not be having favorable comments from Kenyans, from a section of the clergy, he comes to a house that is almost fully aligned to him. And I'm speaking about this because of the broad-based government that in effect literally brought the uh, Azimio side, especially the ODM side, to walk the same uh, path and uh, read from the same script with the Kenya Kwanzaa side. So President William Ruto, we are last year, he came in to address an, a national assembly that was divided in terms of Kenya Kwanzaa and the Azimio La Umoja Kenya Kwanza, uh, One Kenya Coalition. Today he comes to a parliament that has a bigger number supporting him. Speak about all the UDM members of parliament. Speak about uh, ODM members of parliament, most of them. He will only be having pockets of members of parliament, perhaps, who do not agree with him. And I speak about perhaps members of parliament who are allied to his former deputy, ousted deputy regarding Ashagwa, but not a big number to disturb his uh, presentation today not a big number to disturb his address so we expect he will be having a very very smooth address uh, and parliament today and we will also be seeking to hear from members of parliament in terms of what exactly are they is their position in terms of where the country is remember last year as we headed to the state of the nation we had some uh, vocal members of parliament uh, talk about nairobi senator edwin sifuna who declared that he will not be attending that particular session because in his own words he could not listen to lies and uh, he felt that if he attended that particular session then the president lies he would not control himself and may shout him down so he chose not to attend will he attend today's session if he does attend today's session, what will he have to say uh, to the country? What will other members of parliament who are a bit skeptical of the William Ruto administration last year, this uh, same time last year, say today, especially about where the country is? These are some of the things that we shall be discussing with uh, the members of parliament. But even outside parliament, if we go beyond what the president is expected to say, is the atmosphere around parliament this is a very important thing because there has been uh, there have been conversations online about occupying parliament today today president william ruto will be addressing and those not happy about his administration are saying and this is from social media that they will be protesting and they're using the very famous words of occupy parliament we say occupy parliament to remember the days of june especially june 25th when they breached security here and entered into parliament so it is obvious from this particular uh, expectations and this particular uh, calls of protests that there are lots of police officers around parliament when we were coming in from the nation center we saw a 
contingent of GSU officers around KICC. I believe getting a brief, you could only see the red beret uh, all through the KICC compound. Some police officers are already uh, on patrol in town, and here around Parliament, there are several other police officers in anti-riot gear. So perhaps ex expecting uh, anything from the people who are expressing dissatisfaction from the President William Ruto uh, administration. They do not want to take any chance. They, uh, this particular threats happened in June. Uh, chances were taken and eventually there was a breach into Parliament. That was on the 25th of June. So any threat to occupy Parliament right now in terms of a protest is being taken uh, with, with, in, 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 uh, with better preparations from the security officers here. You saw that statement from police spokesperson Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Resila who spoke about uh, what the police are saying and telling the people to continue uh, with their businesses and urging anyone who might have intended to cause chaos not to do that and ins insisting that police officers then will be on ground to ensure that everything is uh, goes as planned and law and order is maintained. Indeed, I can confirm that that from around Parliament and from the routes that I have I have used to come to Parliament is happening. Lots of police officers. But then again, politically speaking, our political pundits may start to discuss then what does this mean for a President William Ruto, a head of state who is addressing the country at a time when the entire parliament is cordoned off. That is something for discussion and uh, we will be seeing how this pans out. Uh, what does it speak about President William Ruto's uh, leadership at this particular time? Uh, whereas perhaps last year there was not this much of, uh, of, 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 of security officers around parliament and around the Nairobi CBD to ensure that persons who are not allowed to access parliament do not access parliament. So yes, we are keeping our eyes uh, into what will be happening here later on when the president comes i am with my colleague david mudoka who will be uh roving around parliament to speak to those members of parliament and bring you up to speed with everything immediately we get the address by the head of state we shall also break it down for you in terms of what does it mean but bottom line michelle is we expect a president william bruto who will be coming here to insist that his government has performed, that inflation is at an all-time low, that the country is better economically. That we can take to the bank. All right, that is uh, Ibrahim Karanja, senior reporter, live for us from Parliament, ahead of that State of the Nation address by President William Bruto. Karanja reporting a lot of security outside uh, Parliament buildings ahead of that State of the Nation address. And here with us in studio, um, a panel of guests to explore some of the key issues likely to dominate that address by President William Bruto, as well as the expectations of Kenyans, the scorecard of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. And a lot has happened since the last uh, State of the Nation address by President William Ruto. Uh, Mokwa, within the last year, President William Ruto promised that Parliament would fast track.